Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. My name is Jack. Today we're building a massive Lego Star Wars mock. Specifically, it is going to be the Ewing UT60D, the uh, Ultimate Collector Series version of this set um, with the instruction booklet and the original design has come from the builder Mirko. It is an excellent design. We have been drooling over this thing for the past like two or three months and we finally got all of the pieces and all we need to do now is build the darn thing. So first, I'm gonna organize all these different parts into uh, all these cups down here and we're gonna start a very awesome build. I have a feeling it's gonna take me quite a while just because of the sheer number of pieces, but I cannot wait to get the final form of the Ultimate Collector Series U-Wing in the studio. So, let's start. Okay, so the Ultimate Collector Series U-Wing is finally complete. It was a two day build, or two and a half days really, and that's mostly because it was 3,000 plus pieces all on the table at the same time. But anyways, let's just get into the properties. In terms of proportions and attention to detail, I wouldn't say it's accurate. I would say it is something like hyper accurate. Mirko, the designer, describes having started putting the U-Wing model together even before the Rogue One movie was released, and he really did set out to make this mock look as good as possible, not just in its wonderful proportions, but also focusing on the details of the imperfections of the ship. Just like any vehicle flown by the Rebellion, none of them were in tip-top shape, and the wear and tear of these often very beat-up vehicles would show up on the outside in the sheet metal of the ship. You can see some examples of this towards the back by the engine. We have some sort of alternating colors between white and yellow, and as you move towards the front of the ship, there's just a lot of little minor details between having just maybe a little bit of extra extra yellow on one side, or maybe one or two differently sized gray plates to show also some wear and tear. And one of the leading factors that also makes this ship feel just a bit more real is the different types of surfaces that sort of proliferate in different parts of the ship. For example, the wings have a lot of Technic, which serves to make them very smooth, and also it's combined with the snotting technique, that is an acronym for studs not on top, which makes sense in this situation because the wings would be smoother. And then as you get closer to the hull, we've got a few different sort of layered areas, more of the great pieces are proliferating, and there's a combination of some tiles and open studs. And when you move even further back, getting towards the engine, a lot more studs are showing more great pieces and just generally more layering, and that makes sense. This part would have a bit more wear, there'd be more tear, there'd be more people maybe operating on the ship, opening up panels and the such, and this sort of gradual change from almost no studs to quite a few in the back kind of just gives a more aesthetically pleasing overall 
overall look to the build. Now that we're looking closely at the back section of the U-Wing, let's take a closer look at the engine block itself. In the center, there is a really clever dish build. It's definitely a lot more interesting to look at than a series of bars and clips and grates that we usually get for these sorts of areas on spaceships, and it's also incredibly accurate to the U-Wing itself. Now, when we're in the very back, I think these are heat dispersion plates. At least, that's what they are on the snow speeder, and in fact, the build style here is very similar to what we got from the Ultimate Collector snow speeder. Now, let's move on to the four very large thrusters. They are all identical builds, and personally, for me, this was the most fun part of the build to put together. I really like how the cylinder detailing for the panels on the outside was so simple to put together, but really does look amazing. And then the thrusters in the back are just made up of a bunch of different type of uh, wheel pieces as well as gears. I like that some of the parts are very sleek and shiny while others have sort of a matted black finish. And then right at the opening at the ends, we have just a very subtle detail that shows a little bit of thrust action, but it's nothing that sticks out too far, just a nice internal glow. Also, one of my favorite parts about the engine build is this subtly hidden huge wagon wheel that is part of the intake in the front. You can see it hidden behind the uh, lightsaber handle build, and I think that part fits perfectly. Now, underneath the ship, there's also some great detailing. In fact, underneath the build is where you can find a lot more of the clever angle stitching. And what I mean by that is there's just a nice balance between these sort of ratcheted joints that have angled out some of these uh, brick walls. In the back, there really is a nice example of that. And while you're here, you can also see there's quite a few inverted uh, curved slope pieces that really smooth out that transition from where the engine's attached to the body. When we get to the front, we also have something that looks very similar to an intake. It's kind of snugly sat between uh, some of the other angled bricks. And once again, you can see another great example of those nice curved inverted pieces that lead up to another one of those big windshield pieces. Now, there's a few other very special external details I want to point out to you guys, but I'm going to do that a little bit later when I start talking about this wonderful printed manual. But right now, I'm going to talk to you about the dimensions and really the scale of this mock. It is massive. The length of this thing is measured at 88.8 centimeters, which is about 35 inches long. It is uh, 33 centimeters wide, 13 inches, and then 13.4 centimeters high, or about five and a quarter inches. But what do the numbers really mean? Here is a banana for scale, banana guy for scale, or perhaps we should show this thing off next to the U-Wing set that came from Lego. And uh, yeah, it is really, really a very large mock when you look at it like this. Also, while we're at it, might as well throw in that micro fighter, and that's one pretty decent size progression. Now, here is the U-Wing next to the Ultimate Collector Series Star Destroyer set. It is only a couple of centimeters shorter than this one, and it's actually more pieces. Now, here's a big question. Is this ship minifig scale? As in, is this ship scaled properly to the exact size of what a minifigure would be? And the answer is no, it is considerably bigger. This is uh, often the case with Ultimate Collector Series builds, and when I did the meter conversion online, the U-Wing would have to be around 57.5 centimeters or 22 and a half inches or just look at this superimposed image and that's roughly how big the U-Wing would have to be if it was made perfectly for Lego minifigs. Now the payoff for the extra size is of course all of this wonderful detailing that we're getting, but there's one major aspect of this mock that I haven't showed you guys yet, and that is uh, its functions. This U-Wing does have a bunch of different things that it can do. Number one, can it deploy its wings? Yes, of course it can. They splay outwards at exactly 121 degrees, and when this happens, the width of the ship becomes 136 centimeters. That's about 53 and a half inches which is just huge. I don't know if we're going to be able to permanently display the ship like this just because of the sheer size that it takes up. But you have to admit the U-Wing does look pretty awesome when it is in its sort of attack position. And there's one major thing I definitely have to point out when it's like this. It actually has special made little stands to keep the wings up because they are only actually attached by two pins on one single Technic bar each. So there's no way the wings could possibly support themselves if you didn't have the stands. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but the payoff for this is A, it's very easy to disassemble if you need to transport this thing, and B, it also allows, I think, for some of the detailing to just look a bit nicer on the mock altogether because it doesn't need to have all of this extra reinforcement to keep the wings super, super sturdy. At the end of the day, this makes the mock look a lot more accurate. And the last thing I want to say about the folding function is that when you put them back together, just be aware that the rotating joint is very far from where the Technic pinhole is supposed to reattach, so there is a little bit of a, a tight fit. You have to kind of bend the wing a little bit to get it to reconnect. Second biggest function is the opening and closing of the sliding doors on either side of the ship. It's actually 
a fun little building technique with the modified plates just sort of fitting in between two different Lego plates. And what that does is allow for a very smooth opening and closing of these sliding doors. Inside is a fully fleshed out interior with seats that can fit a bunch of minifigs. And we also have one massive build for a rotating gun for somebody to man from the inside of the hull. Now the last feature technically isn't a feature because the default build prevents you from opening up the cockpit, but with very little effort, you can switch that up. And here is a closer look at the interior and the seats are really nice, a little bit bigger, like they should be than normal minifig scale. And we've got some great printed pieces that make up the dash and some of those old computer screen tile prints that add a little bit more depth as well. It really is a nice looking cockpit. And yes, just like the normal U-wing ship, you can see down through the cockpit because there is that extra window at the bottom. Now I've been showing off the build pretty much exclusively so far with it on its stand, but you can take the U-wing off the stand and attach four landing gear. They just simply stick on with a few pieces there. They do not fold. You have to just take them off if you've got them on normal display, but the U-wing can indeed be landed on the ground if that's the way you want to set it up. And it seems I've gone through all of the different aspects of the ship. There is one more bit of the build that comes with the instructions. I mean, not including the stand that it's been resting on, but this is our minifig stand and also it holds the plaque with the UCS sticker. That's right, this build does come with its own stickers. Mirko has appropriately formatted this detail in the same way that all the other Star Wars UCS models have. It shows off the ship model and all of its sort of physical specs. Now I've got the sixth most main characters from Rogue One filling up the stands on the side. This is something of course you'd have to collect individually, but they look really good here and I'm glad that it is not part of the main stand that holds up the ship and you can kind of orient it on either side of the build or really wherever you want. It gives you just a few uh, more display options. And now I think I've gone through most of the main aspects of the build. Let me show off the manual itself. I referenced this in the beginning, but this is a limited edition printed manual that came from Mirko. And I gotta say the quality of this booklet is incredible, really unprecedented. This is probably better than even a Lego Ideas manual book, which is uh, sort of on a higher tier from what you would get normally from a Lego set. It's formatted in a very similar way to what we might get from also a special Lego set with information about the builder, some very high quality pictures of what the mock looks like in its finished form, some more information about the Lego model itself, and then also uh, the different building sections or building blocks that create the entire ship. This makes the mock easier to put together because it is segmented out a little bit better, and many of the building block chunks can also be taken off easily if you need to transport this thing long distances. Also, a quick little note about the instructions. I like that the pieces that you're not using in that particular step have been whited out. It definitely puts you in a little bit of a different mindset when you build, and I, for one, kind of liked it. Also, if we flip all the way to the back, I just want you to see this little print that we have here. Everything, including the instructions, all the modeling, everything, the photos, this was all done by the same guy. There's his website at the bottom, that is starbricks.net, and you guessed it, this thing is for sale. The high-quality book I've got in my hands right now is only going to be sold for a limited time. I believe every purchaser of the instructions will be getting their individual code name and joining the Blue Squadron, quote unquote. And once again, that is starbricks.net. I will leave a link in the video description below. And also the booklet does come with uh, these special stickers here. You can see the one that I've already shown you. And by the way, let's switch back to the mock so I can show the stickers that go on the windshield. I made sure to try to place them as exactly as I could. I think they look great there. And there's also these nice little bits of detailing that go along the front. So I'm just going to run a few shots of the set by you one last time and give you my final thoughts. The U-Wing UT-60D Ultimate Collector Series model is just that. It's an Ultimate Collector Series model, and I think it wears the title well. The quality of the build is extremely high standard. It doesn't really feel very flimsy. Of course, like any massive mock like this, it's going to have parts that are less stable than others, but this has gone above and beyond what my initial expectations were, and they were really high. And just like any Ultimate Collector Series model, there is a wonderful manual that goes along with it very high quality and I have a feeling I'll have no problem convincing anybody that enters our studio that this is an official Lego set. It feels as complete as I think it should and I could not be happier with the final product. Okay. 
All right, that is it for this episode, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you're interested in purchasing uh, this manual, I have left a link in the description below to starbricks.net. And thanks again, Mirko, for designing such an awesome build and making a great manual to go along with it. We are really stoked with uh, the way this thing turned out and the next challenges, trying to find a place for this thing to fit in our studio. But anyways, that's it. Thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Thank you.